Hello, this is Dr. Brown. In this video, uh, we're going to uh, go over the practice tests, cover all the items you need to know for the test. So here are some of the kinds of questions you'll be you need to be able to address on the test. First, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, the variable, whether it's a categorical kind of variable or numerical uh, variable. The weight of a car is obviously would be in pounds or kilograms or something like that, and it's obviously numerical. The uh, variable hair color of uh, my grandchildren, uh, you certainly don't give the color uh, a number. It's definitely categorical. Now, here's one on Social Security number of Georgia citizens. Uh, obviously, it is a number, but it doesn't tell you uh, uh, the size of anything, or you don't use that number to calculate something. So it would be categorical. Um, the annual income of CEOs in uh, New York State, not not New York State, uh, would be numerical, obviously. And then the variable gross uh, domestic product per capita of world countries would be numerical. The variable do you like ice cream is obviously going to be a yes or a no, and it is uh, categorical. The variable birth rate of U.S. children is obviously going to be numerical. Now we're going to talk about uh, sampling. As we talked about before, uh, when you're doing some kind of uh, study of any population, you want to figure out uh, the best sampling method, which could uh, you'd want to want it to lead to maybe the most accurate results. Some cases you want to do it uh, uh, as low cost as possible and yet still be uh, accurate. Uh, here are some examples, and we need to figure out um, what the sampling method is. We got 49 students selected at random from the sophomore class, from the junior class, and 48 from the senior class. Uh, so we're taking uh, basically all the classes here and then taking samples from, from them. That would be stratified sampling. Uh, to avoid working late, a quality control analyst simply inspects the first 100 items produced in a day. Well, that would be convenience sampling. Number 10, a pollster uses a computer to generate 500 random numbers and interviews the voters corresponding to those numbers. That is called simple random sampling. Now, a researcher uh, wants to uh, survey academic performance of high school students in Spain. He divides the entire population into different cities, selects a subgroup of the cities, and takes a random sample from each. Well, here we got, uh, say, city one, city two, city three, uh, city four, maybe all the cities in Spain, city maybe 22. And he's going to just take a few of these and sample. That would be cluster sampling. You don't take the entire uh, population there. Number 12, the name of each contestant is written on a separate card. The cards are placed in a bag, and, and three names are picked from the bag. That is simple random sampling. The 
the other, one of the things we're going to be doing is being able to interpret charts and uh, graphs and glean data from them. Uh, here is a pie chart uh, of the intended measure of high school students. Uh, what is the most popular measure? Well, you should just be able to look at this. And, and in this particular case, it's obvious uh, which is the biggest piece of the pie here, and it would be science, 32%. Sometimes we'll be working with a frequency chart. The frequency chart shows the ages of 25 patients who suffered strokes. What percentage you had strokes were in the 45 to 49 age range. But what we need to do is look at this uh, frequency chart and fill in uh, some information. One of the things it tells you is the total number of people in the age groups. And we need to address the ones in the 45 to 49 age group. So if the sum total is 25, then we just need to count up um, these and uh, 5, 8, 9, 10, 13, 18, 19, 20. There are 20 of these, so there will be five in the age group 45 to 49. Now, the relative frequency uh, would be five over 25, uh, which is 0.2. And the cumulative frequency would just be five, because that's the first age group. And the answer to what percentage who had strokes were in the 45 to 49 age range would be 20%. We take the same chart, and remember this is 5, and this is 0.2, and this is 5. And the question is what percentage had? Uh, their strokes after the age of 69. Um, well, if we look at the ones who had strokes after the age of 69, it would be, be these three groups. And you've got three plus two is five plus three is eight. So eight out of uh, 25 had strokes, and that would be 0.32, which is 32%. Now we've got a bar chart here, a vertical bar chart, and it lists the winners of the Wimbledon women's single title for the years 1976 uh, to 1995. Obviously, if you look at these names, this is before Vanessa Williams came on the scene because she's been dominating things for quite a long time. Okay, looking at the chart, qu first question is, uh, how many total games did the two top players win? Well, it's pretty obvious from that. Natural Velova and a graph had the top two, and that would be 15. How many total games were won by the women? Just add them all up. Two plus one plus nine plus one plus six plus one equal uh, 20. So there were 20. And what percentage of the games did the top two players win? Well, they won 15 games out of 20, which was 0.75 or 75%. Number 17, sometimes you look at a pie chart 
And uh, this particular pie chart shows the breakdown of the cost of printing and selling books for a publishing company. And uh, printing costs, transportation costs, uh, paper costs, binding costs, and royalties, and then promotion costs. Um, if the total cost for one month's publications is 128500 how much is the royalty cost and the printing cost? Well, the royalty cost uh, is 15%. So for that month, 0.15 times $128,500 is what they would have spent, which is $19,275. You multiply that out. So the answer for the royalty cost is 19275 Printing costs is 20%. So that would be 0 0.2 times 128500 is equal to $25,700. So for printing costs, it would be $25,700. Now, you can fast forward through some of this when I'm uh, putting this in my calculator if you want to. Here we want to be looking at the nine employees of an electronics company, uh, nine that retired, their ages of retirement are listed below. Find the mean retirement age and round to the nearest 10. But what we want to do is just add up uh, the ages and you can do it on your calculator if you want to. Uh, I'm going to uh, actually clear L1 and I'm just going to put the data in. You don't have to, but I'm going to do it 57. Enter, 64, enter, 59, enter, 53, enter, 66, enter, 58, enter, 67, Enter, 51, enter, uh, and uh, 54, enter. So we have all nine. If we had to do more for this, I would, I would certainly go through here and check all your numbers. And it looks like we have them incorrectly. So now we want to calculate the mean retirement age. So hit second data, variable statistics on L1, which is picked, uh, frequency one, and then hit calculate. And the mean is 58.777. So, uh, The mean is equal to 58.8 rounded to the nearest tenth. Now the next one, uh, we see the amount of precipitation in inches on January the 1st and 11 different U.S. cities find the mean 
precipitation. Now, if you wanted to, you could just go and add all these up and divide by the number, which is um, 11, n is equal to 11. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the calculator. And in this case, uh, I've already got L2 cleared, so I'm going to put the data there. I'm going to go 0.152. Uh, enter. 0.072. Enter. 0.146. Enter. 0.099. Enter 0 0.079. Enter 0 0.108. Enter 0 0.151. Enter 0 0.087. Enter. Point one zero nine. Enter point one three one. Enter and then point zero eight two. Enter and we've got eleven numbers there. And I'm going to now hit second cal or second data, which is stat do variable statistics, and then do it on L2. You've got to always remember uh, which list you put it in. And then frequency is one, hit calc. And the average is point one one zero five, And uh, 0 0.11, 054 and rounding it to the nearest thousands, it would be 0 0.1105. Now we want to calculate the median. We want to find the median for the given sample data. In this particular case, all the numbers are laid out in order from uh, smallest to the largest. And we want to pick out the medium, uh, which would be the middle number. In this case, there are uh, odd number of data points. And so 21 is absolutely uh, the middle point. And so the medium is equal to 21. Now, number 21. A new business has had the following monthly net gains, and we want to find out what the median net gain was. Um, what I want to do is urge you to put this in your calculator rather than trying to uh, sort all these out in order. Um, so we're going to bring up the calculator. And I'm going to go to data. I'm going to put this in L3. And I'm going to put 6402. Enter. 1264. Enter. 3667. Enter. Seven one six five enter thirty eight thirty enter one zero three seven enter eighty five thirty enter five zero eight six. 
enter, and five, seven, five, eight, enter. And so we have now uh, we're supposed to have 10. And here is a case where I want to figure out which number we left out. So now we check. This is what I would do on the test, folks. One, two, six, four, three, six, six, seven, seven, one, six, five. Notice I left seven, six, three, five out. So remember, I left seven, six, three, five. We're going to put that at the end. Three, eight, three, zero, oh, one, zero, oh, three, seven, eight, five. 5086-5758. So see how easy it is. We're going to, uh, to, to, to make a mistake. Notice we caught our mistake and we're going to put 7635 in which we had left out. Hit enter. And now we want to calculate second data variable statistics, we want to pick L3, we want to hit a frequency of 1, hit calculate, and now we're going to look for the median, and the median is 5422, and I think that agrees with what your key says. And in a way, I'm sort of glad I made a mistake there because it just indicates that if you're doing something in a calculator and you're putting it in relatively fast, you, maybe you should slow down. And also, it shows you need to check what you put in. Okay, number 22, the number of vehicles passing through a bank drive upline during each 15-minute period were recorded. Results are shown below. Find the median number of vehicles going through the line in a median in a 15-minute period. Um, here again, I'm going to do this at the calculator. And I'm going to go data. And I'm going to clear what's in L1. And I'm going to put the data in 20, 22, 20, 23, 23, 20, 25, 22. 30. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-four. Then nineteen. Twenty-six. Twenty. 15. I would recommend that you folks be doing this as we as I go through it. Put it in your calculator. 10, 22, 23, 22, and another 22. And now we've got 20 points in the calculator. And I tell you what, if I were taking the test right now, I would uh, go 
through and check my numbers. And sure enough, uh, 20, 22, 20, 23, 23, 20, 25, 22, 30, 26, 26, 24, 19, 26, 20, 15, 10, 22, 22, 22. So now we're ready to calculate the median, go second. Data, variable statistics. We have it in L1, so we're gonna to have to choose L1. And then frequency one, and then go calculate. And uh, go and look for the median. medium is 22 and I believe that's what the key says now one of the other things you'll need to calculate on the test is a five number summary uh, for a given data here are the weighted pounds of 18 randomly selected adults given below Again, I'm gonna put this in the calculator. You could take all of this, put it in order and do it by hand. But I'll tell you what, if you in some kind of business that needs to get things done very accurately and quickly uh, so that you can check it, do it in your calculator. So here we go again, I'm gonna hit data. I um, think what I'll do is just go ahead and clear out L1 and start with 120 enter 145 enter 187 enter 153 enter 119 enter 138 enter 127, enter, 142, enter, 179, enter, 164, enter, 182, enter, 202 and finally the last row <clears throat> 114 enter 174 130 enter 149 enter 167 Enter, and then 174, enter. And that's uh, 18 data points we put in. Uh, on the test, I'd go back and check every one of these. Let's just assume that I put these in correctly and we'll go to second calc, or second uh, data, which is stats. Go to variable stats. Uh, and I believe we put these in L1, frequency one, and then go calculate. And this should now have the five uh, number summary, starting with the minimum. And I will write these down. Uh, after we go through, the minimum is 114. The first quartile is 130. The median is 151. The third quartile is 174. 
and the max is 202. So the five number summary, a 114, 130, 151, 174, and the last one was 202. And from this, you could do a box chart. This is min, max, medium, median, uh, first quartile, <clears throat> and third quartile. Okay, number 24, five, four different distributions are given in the four box plots below. But which distribution has the smallest median? Well, uh, the one with the smallest median is absolutely C. Uh, which has the greatest variation? The, great, the variation will be from min to max. And just looking at the links here, D would have the uh, greatest variation. And which is skewed to the left? Well, that is C. Now, we've got uh, five numbers here. And uh, the question is, if 26 is replaced with 39, so let's go do that. How will this affect the range? Well, the range is still going to be, the range up here is 40 minus 5 which is 35, the range for the new set is still going to be 40 minus 5 equals 35. And the other question was, how will, will the, it affect the standard deviation? Well, now we replace 26 with 39, and obviously it will increase. the standard deviation. And that's simply because we're taking the square root of uh, five minus the mean. Squaring it, 24 minus the mean. Squaring it. 25 minus the mean. And then instead of putting 26 in, we put 39 in. Square it. And then 40 minus the mean. Square it. Obviously, and then divide this by 4, which is n minus 1. Obviously, uh, We've got a larger number to add up here than we would have if we did it for this uh, set of data. So it increases the standard deviation. So why would you say, it's, if you want to understand uh, the variation of data, why you would prefer the standard deviation as opposed to the range? Because sometimes the range does not tell you anything. The range does not change. But the variation in the data can increase, as you can see if you, uh, in this example. And if you use a standard deviation, you would detect that. Well, that is uh, the test two uh, review.